Hi. In this slide, uh, this is what might be called, well, actually, a, 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 a professor of mine at Harvard Business School and a fellow I stayed in touch with uh, over the years, who was a great pioneer in, in service management uh, area, named Jim Heskett, came up with this, what he, this, this map, he calls it, uh, called the service profit chain. I have put, I've tweaked it around a little bit, and I've also put niche service profit chain because when we look at, 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 at business best practices, it doesn't tell us who the number one best niche is for a given branch and a given distribution channel in a given city. Um, that's going to be peculiar to that branch and what kind of customers tend to be in that, that city and what kind of competitors are there and what they accidentally were good at or not good at historically. So we want to take these best practices and tune them, uh, focus them on, t you know, have a target, which is going to be the, the niche customer personified by the five core profitable customers, the five target gazelles and so forth. And if we want to retain them, not cause them to leave, and then penetrate them further, and then partner them. Uh, we need to to do certain things. So this this ties a lot of the pieces of the puzzle together. It turns out that if we get happy right employees, and this is sort of a an attitude and an aptitude, they got to have a capability for what we want them to do, and they've got to be upbeat about wanting to do it. And we have to have an environment that attracts and keeps them and keeps them engaged. So if we get those kind of people, and number two, we can just keep them. The longer we keep them, whether because we have formal, rigorous cross-training on you know, service excellence skill sets and so forth, or just by showing up and learning how we do it here, what happens is uh, they get better at what they're doing. So let's call that mastery. And in a formal sense, you know, we go like in martial arts from white belts to black belts, first, second, third degree. And it turns out that the better we are at something, the more we enjoy it, the better we feel about it, the more confident and pride we have in it. So mastery actually is long-term motivational. If our people stay and they get better at what they're doing, then what happens is the service improves. If the service improves, another virtuous cycle. So think of all these little arrows going back to keeping people happy as snowballs rolling down a hill, getting bigger, 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 faster, faster, faster. If service improves, then morale goes up because when you derfed it, do it right the first time, that's what that stands for. When you do it right the first time, it's less work than doing it wrong and then having an upset customer and upset sales rep and people pointing fingers at each other and you know, the, making mistakes and having customers angry at you is, is not a happy scene. Uh, so what happens is by having being better and better at things, we tend to be, have more pride and less stress. Now, what happens is if we can make the service, if we can measure the service and improve it to the point where customers say, you know what? There are a lot of good good competitors out there, but you are the best. So imagine you're a sales rep and you walk into account and the customer says to you two scenarios. One is bad scenario. Hey, look at your company just screwed this up and I got downtime and now I've got an upset customer and you know, bump, 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 bump. And you know, as a sales rep, this is not your cue to sort of say, let's get married. And how about last look at an extra point for me and an extra point for the horse that just didn't deliver for you. You're kind of in damage control and like, hey, can I cut the price or do something for you just to keep what I have? But on the flip side, imagine you walked in and the customer looks at you and says, I don't get it. How do you get your company to do what it does? I mean, I had this unusual thing. I called up. They said, no problem. Bum, 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 bum. And it's all done. And it's going to make me look like a genius. I have a chance of cracking this new, new, new account and getting the business. That's fantastic. Well, of course, that would be my cue to sort of say, well, you know, yeah, we're great. So why don't you give me all the business? Why do you continue to, you know, give your business to other customers or other vendors that compromise your capability to do it right the first time and have uptime and customer retention satisfaction yourself? So this is far more motivating to salespeople to have a super service excellence horse to ride than, than anything you can think of. So now you have happy customers and happy sales reps come in and pat the employees on the back and everybody's happy. It's getting pretty good here. Love fest. Let me erase some of the stuff here. So the, uh, the next step is when the customers are happier, then they stay, they buy more, 
they might want to say let's partner and start to create a system so we can get married and automate integrate the, the relationship and then they may even be motivated to tell their friends you know what you need to buy from ABC they, they you can't afford not to do business for them as a result our sales start growing faster than the industry because we are not losing customers at the same rate the competition is. We're getting greater penetration. We have the ticket to get married. If that, it's, that's, you know, it's, it's time for the customer to wise up and figure that out. And then we're getting the most powerful form of free advertising. We're also growing our profits bigger and faster for all these reasons. If you have happy employees, they're more productive. If they're not turning over, you have turnover costs. If you don't have screw up service costs, you have to do it right the first time. That's the, the, the low cost, high value, high morale way to do something. Um, and if we're retaining, penetrating, whatever, uh, we're making more money. And this is good because we need to make the money to reinvest it back into the business to support more inventory and receivables, to support more sales, to support more margin dollars, which gives people raises. And, it, and when a company is growing, you can promote people from within. So now, because the company is growing faster, more profitably, it becomes an economic engine that feeds all the stakeholders, the employees, the customers, the shareholders, and the, and the, and the suppliers at a greater total economic rate than the competition. So all the best people want to be part of our story. And that's the best thing of all. Uh, we will come back and, and look at this, this, this service profit chain at, at a very elemental level uh, in many of the video clips to come. Thank you.